Father's Day is right around the corner, and the Barstool Sports Store has got gifting covered for you this year. They have a bunch of polos and quarter zips for the golfing dads, or if you're more laid back, we have the t-shirts and hoodies for the more casual dads. Head to store.barstoolsports.com to find the perfect gift for your dad. Uh, you could see through all of this fucking bullshit. You're not breaking any new ground by posting a picture of your fucking grilled chicken breast. I don't like it. At all. And it just fucking irks the shit out of me. Oh. Do you realize that if you're not on any social media for like a week, nobody, and I mean nobody, will give a fuck. Ugh. Like I said before, I don't want to fucking tap my foot when I'm buying a pair of fucking pants. You motherfucker. Ugh. It's not life or death, it's lunch or dinner. Remember that. God damn it. Ugh. How fucking aggravating. I remember that's fun, do you? Good for you. Nobody gives a shit. Ooh. Whoa. Yuck. Ugh. Welcome to the Jim Florentine Everybody is Awful podcast on Barstool Sports. I want to thank everyone that came out, the podcast listeners in Providence, Rhode Island. I did shows there a couple weeks ago. Met a bunch of you guys after the show. Thanks for the support. Always good to see those people. Um, more tour dates. Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. I'll be at the Mock Chunk Opera House Saturday, June 5th. And then Saturday, June 19th, East Brunswick Square Mall is an outdoor stage outside. Me and Rich Foss are doing that. So all dates are up on JimFlorentine.com. Friday, July 24th, or Saturday, July 24th, I'll be filming a new comedy special at the Fairfield Theater in Fairfield, Connecticut. Tickets are on sale. They should be on sale by the time you hear this podcast. Go to my website. All the info's up there. But if you want to come see them doing two shows that night, new comedy special filmed, who the fuck knows where it's going to be. Probably not Netflix. Most likely Amazon Prime. And definitely be on YouTube. Uh, but anyway, yeah. So uh, Saturday, July 24th, you want to come down and support Fairfield Theater, Fairfield, Connecticut. Um, website. Uh, no, the email, Florentine at BarstoolSports.com. You see any garbage out there that might be good for the podcast. My biggest fan in Delaware, why I'm not remembering her name right now, was very mad that I did another um, awful Yelp Reviews podcast. She was saying, Jim, you're bitching about the same thing over and over again. That's what this podcast is. I've been doing it for 10 years now. I'm not sure what you want. You know, this is what it is. I pick out subjects. I bitch about them. I don't talk sports. I don't talk politics. Like if someone did a politics podcast, would you be like, you keep talking about politics? Or if I did a sports podcast, why do you keep talking about sports? It's driving to, this is what the podcast is. It's not for everyone. It's not. I, I understand it. I've understood it for a long time. But the people that like it enjoy it. They understand what I'm doing. But if you think it's the same shit, I don't know. There's only, you know, I find things to bitch about and that's what I do. And I'm going to be doing it for another 10 years. So either you're on or you're off. I don't know what to tell you. But just, I look, would you rather me do a podcast on five-star Yelp reviews? Where I'm just like, we had an amazing time at this place. The food was awesome. The service was awesome. The owner even came over, asked us how our meal was. We left a 30% tip. I highly recommend this place. It was the best meal I've had in 20 years. Is there anything good there? That's how I would deliver it. Is that, is that an interesting podcast? Probably not. So I'm just saying, just enjoy it for whatever the fuck it is. It's just me ranting like a fucking idiot. I'm just saying stupid shit to get you guys through the day. You know what I mean? I listen to podcasts too, which is like, it's perfect. I, I got ones that I listen to. Kevin Brennan's podcast, a comedian. I listen to his. I look forward to it. I know what he's going to do every time. He's going to go off. He's going to bitch. He's going to scream. He's going to whine. I like that shit. Joey Diaz, my friend. I listen to his podcast. He's going to tell some crazy stories about growing up. It's going to be great. So just enjoy it for what it is. Lisa is her name, I think, if I'm not remembered. I probably, now she's going to be mad. I can't believe you didn't remember my name, whatever. I got a lot of shit going on. Not really, but 
Let's get to the podcast. Um, shit that never happened. Here's another thing, another lie. Devin sent this in. As always, you say, what What did she hope to get out of posting this? I, I don't know. I wish there was something you could just give somebody when you feel like they need, they need a pat on the back. They need some reassurance that they're a good person, that they're funny, that they're raising their kid well, whatever it is. I think they need that fucking jolt every once in a while. I wish there was something you could take, a tablet or something, or I don't know, do something or go to a website and get that from that. But I guess you can't. And you know how these trends go. As soon as people see and get, you know, other other friends that they follow getting some action on their tweet or their fucking dumb post they put, then they go, what? I got to do it too. So let's pretend that my kid said this. So this woman, I mean, just... Listen to this and just, this woman needs to be locked up. She needs to be like put in a padded room for like six months and just fucking break her down and get into why she's posting something like this. She goes, woke up, discovered my three-year-old had a massive nosebleed. His clothes covered in blood, washed him, Walked into the kitchen, found my five-year-old stirring his brother's bloody clothes in a pot filled with hot water. I need his blood, he said. I need his blood for my poisons. There is a pot of water, blood, cayenne pepper, and cloves boiling on the stove, and it's only 7.53 a.m. So she's telling me, she's telling us that a five-year-old was boiling hot water. A five-year-old went to the stove, filled up a pot and started boiling hot water and put her brother's bloody clothes in there and said, I need his blood. I need his blood for my poisons. A five-year-old did this. I I no idea where this woman's coming from. I really want to get her in a room and just break her down. You know, the police get a suspect and they're breaking them down. And they'll keep them there for hours. They'll keep them tired. They won't let them sleep. They're under all this duress and they finally just go, hey, you know, hey, man, I can get you a hot meal and a bed if you just, you know, be honest with me. And then they just break. Okay, fine. I lied. My five-year-old doesn't know how to boil water. I would never let him near the stove. I would never let him put clothes and start stirring it and saying, I need his blood. I need his blood for my poisons. And this didn't, this all happened by 7.53 a.m. I think she really is just hoping that people go, oh my God, your kids are crazy. That's so funny. That's amazing. And then she's off to work. And she got her a little fucking jolt. She got her a little, you know, hey, people think I'm smart. People think my kids are smart. People think my kids are crazy and weird. And all of this, and I'm a mom. I'm taking care of all this, and it's 7.53 in the morning. Could somebody tell me that it's crazy to be a mom these days? Somebody please... Between this, you know, these lies that people post and the dumb jokes. I guess, look, if, if you know, people say I can't go on social media anymore because of people's politics. I had to unfollow these people. I couldn't take it. So you'd rather see this stuff? I'd rather see, I'd rather see nothing. I'd rather it just go away. Like for someone to post on Facebook, she fell in love with an investor, but he didn't invest in her. What what do you want me to do with that? What do you want everybody to say? 
That's a good one. Ha ha. Here's another one the same post person posted. She fell in love with an accountant, but things just didn't add up. Okay, now what? That's the joke? Okay, I get it. Yeah, the accountant didn't add up because accountants add things up. Okay, now, now what do you want me to do? I really wish my kid was here when I was recording this so I could do this joke on him and just watch a 10-year-old's reaction. He would look at me like, Dad, all right, you fucking... That's corny and you're an asshole. And you just wasted five seconds of my day. That's what he would think at 10. It boggles the mind. This made up shit, the funny, the funny jokes. Here's another one. Now this is, this, the five-year-old son was boiling the bloody clothes and saying, I need her blood. Now this four-year-old, this woman's four-year-old daughter does this. This woman posted, as an officer, I got pulled over for going seven miles an hour over the speed limit. As the officer started walking up to my truck, I rolled my windows down. My adorable and apparently incredibly, and she puts incredibly in capital letters just to let you know, smart, my adorable and, and apparently incredible smart four-year-old daughter started screaming from the back seat. It's coming out. I can't hold it any longer. It's almost here. Now the trooper is hearing her scream this. And he leans in the window and asks her, what's going on here? She looks at him dead in the face and says, I've got poop coming out of my butt. He started laughing. I looked like I was about to cry. He asked how far I had to go, which is about two miles home. He told me to drive safe and get, and get her home to do her business. He could not stop laughing. As, we, as soon as we pulled away, I said, what the hell was that about? The kid smirked and said, I saw it on YouTube, but I didn't think it would work. I said, so you're not pooping? She said, nope, and you're not in trouble either. Oh, my God, OMG. This kid is my hero. So a four-year-old saw this prank on YouTube about when a cop get, pulls someone over and is in the backseat, starts screaming, I'm pooping. I got poop coming out. And then the cop let her go. You know how, notice how she started, she set the story up by going, I got pulled over for doing seven miles per hour over the speed limit. How does she know that? Okay, so the trooper came right up to the window, right? And the kid started screaming right away. And, he, and the trooper goes, what's going on back there? Like, like a trooper's never, like a cop's never pulled someone over where there was a kid crying in the back seat. You think that cop cares? That there's some, yeah, that's a fucking infant in a fucking hot car seat. He wants to get home. He's cranky. He needs a fucking nap. Okay, you think that fucking trooper, what's going on here? Oh, I got poop coming out of my butt. Really? Is that what he said? Okay, how far do you got to go? So he's, and I told him two miles. So if it was 20 miles, would he have let you go? I mean, you were all, you got pulled over. You weren't get, you didn't get pulled over for drinking and driving. You know, and the cop goes, how far do you got to go? Just two miles down the road. Okay, be safe, get home. Okay, you got pulled over for seven miles an hour over the speed limit. You notice how she put seven miles an hour over the speed limit? Because that means that it wasn't that serious. So the cop will let her go. But how did she know she was doing seven miles an hour over speed limit? The co- she said the cop came up to the window and, my, and I rolled it down and my kid started screaming. So he didn't say, hey, you were doing 62 and a 55. So right there, you're fucking lying. You're full of shit. He wouldn't pull you over for doing seven miles an hour of a speed limit. But you had to set the story up like that, like that. Then he would see, you, you know, then he, okay, I'll let you go. It's not that big of a deal. You know, if she was doing 50 miles an hour in a, in a school zone that was 15 miles an hour, 
she couldn't put that in there because then the cop wouldn't have let her go. He'd still give her a ticket. But let's get to the other point. A four-year-old didn't see this on YouTube. A four-year-old didn't remember this. And a four-year-old goes, hey, I'm going to wait. Well, look, mom just got pulled over by a cop. I'm going to try this prank that I saw on YouTube. I want to look that prank up, and I'm going to see if it's out there. I should have done that. I'm going to look that up. Because that's, that's all you need to do now. So if you, you know, you get pulled over, drunk driving, just have your kid in the back going, I got to poop. And then, okay, I'm going to, how far do you got to go? All right, go home. That's really going to work. Everybody was laughing. She was laughing. The trooper was laughing. He couldn't stop laughing. She's got s- seven smiley faces after every fucking line. It's coming out. You know, six smiley faces. I can't hold it any longer. Four more smiley faces. Uh, he, you know, after she's like, I got poop coming out of my butt. He started laughing. There's four smiley faces after that. I look like I was about to cry. There's five smiley faces after that. What the fuck? This is a woman with a child. You're acting like a child. That's what a four-year-old should do is put fucking smiley faces after every f- line. All right, this, is this your phony laugh track? Is that where we're supposed to laugh? Right, everybody's laughing. He couldn't stop laughing. The trooper couldn't stop laughing. You could, yeah, because the troopers are always, a, they're always in a good mood when they pull you over, especially a state trooper, right? They're always joyful and smiling and want to crack jokes and think everything's funny. Yeah, so your four-year-old said, um, you go, hey, so you're not pooping when they pulled away and your four-year-old said, nope, and you're not in trouble either. Yeah, that's what, that's what a four-year-old would say. Nope, and you're not in trouble either. And then OMG, a fucking grown woman, a woman with a, ch- a four-year-old child is writing OMG. This kid is my hero. No, no, she's not. You're using her as a pawn. You're using her to get attention. Attention that you never got for some reason. And you're still craving it. You're a mom. Now you're just fucking mediocre. All right? Once you have a kid, it ain't about you anymore. You just fucking just fall in line. You're just like every other schlub. Like every guy carrying a fucking diaper bag, pushing a stroller. You're that guy. You go sit on a bench when you go to a park to get some rest because you've been pushing that stroller. You're hoping the kid takes a nap. You're just ordinary now, and that's okay, but that's what you are, and you can't handle it, that you're ordinary. So you're going to make up some fucking excuse that your incredibly smart four-year-old said this shit. Awful inspirational quotes is this week's podcast. You know, these things really work out well, these inspirational quotes, because it really helps a lot of people. You know, people with depression issues that are on medication. All they got to do is, you know, look at their Instagram when they wake up in the morning and see somebody post some something. And then, you know, all of a sudden the depression goes away. It's weird. Wouldn't that be interesting? Like if the pharmaceutical company started losing a ton of money because no one had to go on Klonopin anymore because these inspirational quotes are taking over. You know, they're all of a sudden, everyone posting them all over the place is making people better and dealing with their issues. All they got to do is just read somebody's feed. And they're all of a sudden, they're, they're fucked up childhood that they're, you know, having trouble getting over or whatever happened in their life or they were born with it. All of a sudden, it's gone. Just from... Somebody posted an inspirational quote. These people are doing God's work, aren't they? Um, James writes in, hey, Jim, there's a picture of this girl. Um, and she has stenciled on the back of her wall, on her wall. She has, um, it says... Love every moment, laugh every day, live beyond words. <laughs> and he writes, hey, Jim, this is the girl whose awful inspirational quotes I've been sending in. I was looking at her picture trying to decide if I'd still bang her, even though she is a complete wreck and an attention-seeking whore. When I noticed that she even has 
this shit stenciled on her wall. I zoomed in and it says, love every moment, laugh every day, live beyond words. If I came back to her apartment after the bar and saw this on her wall, I'd ask to use her bathroom, take an upper decker, then leave. <laughs> ah, that's funny. If you guys don't know what upper decker is, it's you take a shit in the top of the toilet tank. You know, you take the lid off up top and you shit in there. That's called an upper decker, if you didn't know. But that's great that he would do that. But she has this stenciled on her wall. Love every moment, laugh every day, live beyond words. So in other words, just enjoy life. That's basically what that means, enjoy life. Did you really need to stencil that on your wall? You can't just remember to enjoy life. Before you walk out of the house every morning, do you have to go, let me go, wait, let me go look at the wall real quick. Okay. I want to enjoy life. I want to have a good day. What, oh, what is it? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so love every moment, laugh every day, and live beyond words. Got it. All right, now I'm ready for my fucking day. So you love every moment. Even if, you just got, even if I just got diagnosed with cancer, I got to love every moment. That's probably a moment I wouldn't, I wouldn't love. My kid got into a car accident. Love that moment too. Just curious, because that's the shit that's hanging on your wall that you stenciled on your wall. You know, you break up some, with someone face to face and they're crying their eyes out and you really feel bad hurting them. Guess you're supposed to love that moment too, huh? Some guy breaks up with his girl, fucking destroys her. She's devastated, crying her eyes out. He's trying to tell, I'm sorry. She's not working out. She's supposed to love that moment too? Yeah. Because you said I love every moment. You're the one who stents that on the wall, not me. And you got to laugh every day? Okay, so if one day you're ready to go to bed and you realize you didn't laugh all day, what do you do? Oh, fuck, now I got to find an episode of South Park. So I can laugh because the day's almost over. Just, you know, corny, just cliche. Everybody knows to try to enjoy your life. Some people can, some people can't. That's just a way to fucking, that's just the way it's going to be. You stenciling this shit on your walls, helping nobody, including yourself. But like, like James said, like, unfortunately, look, there's like a 50-50 chance that any girl you're going to hook up with, if you meet her in a bar, like he said, they're going to have some awful inspirational quote up, hung, hung up somewhere in their place. You can't let it bother you. You know what I mean? You just got to play through the pain. You got to keep your eye on the prize is what you got to do and just fucking blow it off. He's going to take an upper deck or he would take an upper deck or leave. That's hilarious. If he did decide to take an upper deck, he should write an inspirational message above the toilet so she could use it, clean the shit out of the tank as a learning experience. You know, come on, laugh every day as some creep shit in the top of your toilet tank and you got to clean it out. Come on. You're supposed to, you, you love this moment, don't you? As you're gagging, you got your shirt over your nose like you robbed the bank. Are you laughing? Because you're supposed to laugh every day. You're loving this moment. Remember, love every moment, even this moment. Love it. It's just embarrassing. It's like... <sighs> the only thing good out of this is that you can actually use this shit on a wall to an advantage. Like if she wanted to talk to you after you were done fucking, you could just point to the, the stencil and go, shh, live beyond words. What? No, I wanted to talk. Shh, look. You, ha you have that shit on your wall. Live beyond words. We don't need any words here. We don't need anything. I wonder if this really changed anybody's life. I wonder if this really makes her happy. I wonder if this really works for her to put that on her wall. I guess nobody has a memory any anymore. 
you know. Just disgusting. Um, what's the next one we got here? Okay, Mike sent this in. He just wrote, look at this fucking horse shit. <laughs> so there's, there's two of them. Same woman. She takes a picture of her socks. She's wearing her socks. On the bottom of the socks, it says, if you can read this, bring me a glass of wine. On the one sock, it says, if you can read this. On the other sock, bring me a glass of wine. And then the other one, she posted... I water you, you water me, we grow together. Yuck. Oof. Oh, does that fucking stink. I water you, you water me, we grow together. What are we, fucking children? Are we seven-year-olds in kindergarten? And we think we're boyfriend and girlfriend? And we came up with that. I wrote that and I'd slip that to you. Hey, I wrote this about you. Oh, thank you. I'm going to bring this home. That's what two seven-year-olds should say. They think they're going to get married one day and they're in kindergarten. I water you, you water me. Look, if this chick wants you to piss on her, she should just come out and ask. You know. Okay, so I got to water you. So you're fine with me standing over your bed in the morning while you're still sleeping and watering you like a plant? Because I got to water you, right? No, it doesn't mean that. No, that's what it says. That's how what I got out of this. Everybody gets their own thing out of these inspirational quotes, right? They can use it whatever they want. It's just like when, you know, a guy writes a song. He's like, hey, you know, whatever you want it to be, it could be. Because, you know, explain what you, what you meant in that song. Now nah, that's whatever you're, you know... It's whatever you take out of that song. Whatever it means to you is fine. I don't want to ruin it for anybody else. So take whatever you want out of that song. So I, that's what I took out of this. I wore to you, you wore to me, we grow together. So I just went and got the fucking, you know, filled the thing up with water. And I, you know, and I, uh, I'm going to water you. Sorry. Oh, did I wake you? I'm just watering you. How about you water yourself, all right? I'm not, I'm not growing anymore. I'm setting my ways and that's it. All right. I have no more room to grow. I've done all the growing I have that I've done in my life and that's it. You don't like it? Fuck off. (sighs) I water you, you water me, we grow together. Yeah. In most relationships, it's her growing out of a size two jeans into a size 14 stretch pants. And same with the guy, too. The guy gets so fat, he, you know, he just wears sweatpants. It's a chore for him to put jeans on. But yeah, go water yourself together. Both of you guys water each other. It's fucking great. And that's great with your socks. You know, one sock, if you can read this, the other sock, bring me a glass of wine. Fucking hilarious. You know, just what every guy wants. A way for his girlfriend to pussy whip him with her feet. You know, not even with her mouth. Now let me put some socks on and fucking demand more orders from you. Yeah, now women who marry deaf guys can nag their husbands just as good as women who marry guys with hearing. You know, oh, the guy's deaf? Okay, I'll just put these socks on. Get me a fucking, bring me a glass of wine if you can read this. If I dated a girl that wore these socks, I'd hold her to it. 7 a.m., I'd wake her up. I'd get up to take a leak, see her wearing those socks. I'll wake her up with a glass of wine. Hey, honey, wake up. I got something for you. I got something for you to drink. Oh, you got coffee for me? No, wine. Why? Why? It's 7 in the morning, I know, but look at your fucking dumb socks you're wearing. Look, if your girlfriend or your wife got a pair of these, you got to get a pair for yourself. You know, one sock says, if you can read this, and the other sock says, come on over here and blow me. Why not that? You want your wine? I want a blowjob. Now we're even. A 
I tell you, if, I, if my girlfriend or wife had this, I would, I'll do the laundry this time and then lose one of them in the laundry. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Where's my other sock? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just went through the whole thing. Yeah, but you did the laundry. I know. I don't know what happened, man. I checked. I checked the washing machine. I checked the dryer. I'm checking. No, I don't know where. And just fucking throw it away. But it doesn't make sense if I only have the one socks. Good. Good. I don't need messages on your fucking sock. I already get enough text messages from a day. I already get fucking 17 text messages a day from you. I don't need it, another message on your sock. Look, if you're spending an extra, you know, probably five bucks on a pair of socks like this with funny little sayings on them, you really don't need any wine. You need a book on how to manage your fucking money better. That's a complete waste. It's not funny. Nobody's laughing at it. And nobody's going to get you a glass of wine if they can read it. All around terrible. But you know what's not terrible? Nuts.com. Everybody likes nuts. This company is phenomenal. They send them right to your door. You don't have to go to the store. They're fresher than the ones that are in the store. It's a simple and convenient way to have nutritious, delicious, healthy nuts, dried fruit, flowers, grains, and so many more other high-quality foods delivered straight to your door. Over 4,000 products to choose from. They got healthy kid family snacks like dried strawberries, custom trail mix, plus all the raw, raw organic, roasted, salted, and and candy nuts, you can imagine, even chocolate dipped. It's an easy to navigate website, great photos of the products. It's a family run business. That's the key. You support the family run businesses, right? You don't have to go buy them at these big chains. Forget the big chains. Support the family run businesses. They take pride in getting you the freshest uh, nuts out there. Nuts.com is your one stop online pantry shop. You can find baking items, items for smoothies rolled oats, beans, and more. They got gluten-free and vegan options if you need that. Delivery is fast. Most orders ship the same day. And fresher products in the supermarket. This is what you got to do. Any new nuts.com customers get free shipping on your first order when you text Barstool to 64,000. So text Barstool to 64,000 to get free shipping on your first order from nuts.com. That's Barstool to 64,000. Terms apply available at nuts.com slash terms. Check them out. Sponsor on the, on the podcast. Everybody could use some nuts, right? Why not? Have them around the house. Have them in your car. You know, something to take. You're going out for a little while. Right, let me. This will hold me over. Have some nuts. Perfect. Back to Waffle Inspirational Quotes. Patrick sent this one in. Uh, he goes, Jim, do you think these people can hear the yuck that guys who aren't trying to fuck them and like this shit make? So this woman posted on... Um, Facebook, a picture of a, of a picture of a tiger. And then she wrote, she lived, she loved, she cried, she never knew, she fell, she laughed, she got up, she grew, and she moved on. she never knew she never knew what how fucking stupid her post is I guess she never realized that everyone at some point in their life is going to go through some shit she never knew she didn't understand it's weird that you know you're going to go through a breakup you're going to lose you know a close family member someone's going to die your pet is going to you know die at some point you didn't know that he had no clue, huh? Look, this post, an inspirational quote, is directed at the guy who screwed her over and broke her heart. We know what she's doing here. 
She wants to let him know she's finally over him. You know, meanwhile, he's probably already moved on with someone else and won't even see this. She's probably spying on him to track what he's up to. And he hasn't been on Facebook in months. Uh, it's just so dumb. Well, who is this helping? You're telling everyone that you moved on? Is that what you're doing? She fell, she laughed, she fell and she laughed. Why? I've never seen anybody do that. When somebody falls, they usually go, ah, fuck, and get back up. Maybe they check their pants to make sure they didn't put a hole in their knees, but they never laugh. Very rarely do they laugh. But of course, there's a bunch of guys liking this chick's post because she's single now and they're hoping to fuck her. That's what they're doing. Every guy looking at this is thinking, okay, her morning period is over now. Now's the time to ask her to hang out. I'm going to throw it out to, hey, if you ever want to get coffee, hey, you know, I just want to talk, something like that. Hey, I'm going to this bar Friday night. I don't know if, you want, if you're around, if you're not doing anything. That's every guy's cue. And every guy that's trying to get in this girl's pants goes, all right, she's over it. <sighs> what a mess. She's crying, that she's laughing, that she's falling, trying to get up. Sounds like just some girl that's fucking shit-faced drunk. Sounds like a night out that some girl had at a friend's bachelorette party. Yeah, yeah, she fell. She was laughing, then she was falling, then she was crying. She was trying to get up. All of that. That's good. That, you know, some woman got over her broken marriage. Her piece of shit husband left her for a younger woman. She wants to let everyone know she's over it. She can't just tell her, her best friends, hey, I'm ready to move on. I need a little time to myself. She wants to let everybody, okay, I'm ready now. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm over it. I moved on. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you moved on. You're still looking at everything the fucking guy does. You're still spying on him. You got fucking friends going, hey, he blocked me. So could you see what he posted on Facebook? Has he been, what has he been doing lately? Could you check it? Because you're still friends with him. He forgot to delete you. Could you just let me know what's going on? Is he still with his ex, the new girlfriend? Did they actually go over to Europe? That's where you, but you moved on. You moved on. You definitely have. It took you a little while, but you're good now. You're not trying to ask about him at all. Look, everybody goes through a fucking bad breakup. Whatever it is, whatever you got to do to get over it. But this woman posting this bullshit is doing nobody a favor. Nobody is going, fuck, this is how you do it. This is it. Tony in London. I know he's a big fan of the podcast. Um, he goes, Jim, I went into a, a pub men's toilet and this nonsense was on the wall. Uh, he goes, a men's pub toilet should never be exposed to inspiring quotes. It's probably our last sanctuary until Mary, who is now Dave, who stands up to shit and sits down for a piss, walks in prime for a lawsuit. <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so someone wrote on the wall in the bathroom, in a stall, aim for the treetops, you'll hit the floor. Aim for the stars, and you'll hit the treetops, but at least you tried. And they took a picture of it like a fucking palm tree. They sketched a picture of a palm tree. Aim for the treetops, you'll hit the floor. Aim for the stars, and you'll hit the treetops. But at least you tried. And the guy fucking sketched out a picture of a palm tree. What does that mean? Aim for the treetops, you'll hit the floor. You, so you aim for the stars, you're going to hit the treetops, but at least you tried? How about just aiming for the fucking toilet bowl? All right? That's all he has to do. Yeah, I, just so I don't have to stand at a puddle of piss while I'm trying to use the toilet. That'd be inspiration enough for me. 
right? You go to the urinal, there's piss all over the floor. You're like, it's fucking disgusting. It's all over your shoes. How about you aim for that? Forget about the fucking treetops. Can you imagine going to a rough inner city pub? You know, those pubs in fucking England and thinking tonight I'm going to do some shots and beers, play some darts. Try to pick up some girl, maybe have sex with her in an alley. But first, first, I'm going to go in the men's room. I'm going to write an inspirational quote while I'm sitting on the toilet. I'm going to bring my Sharpie. You brought a fucking magic marker with you to put that on the wall. Yeah, I don't know how effective an inspirational quote is. You know, when next to, next to it is a cartoon of a cock and balls, you know, drawn by a Sharpie. Yeah, somebody always puts that penis on the wall. Yeah, okay. I don't know which one I'm going to take more serious. You really want to be inspired in a men's room stall in a dive bar. Just stick your dick in the glory hole in the wall. Yeah, then you're there you're inspired. But good. Aim for the treetops. You'll hit the floor. Aim for the stars. You're going to hit the treetops, but at least you tried. This is a, just a dumb, dumb inspirational quote. It's basically telling you that no matter what you do, you're not going to succeed. But at least you could try to fail in a big way. That's what it's telling you. So if you aim for the stars, you're never going to hit the ground. You sure about that? What if you put your whole life savings into an opening of a restaurant, okay? It's your lifelong dream, and, it's, and it completely fails within a couple of years, and you lost all of your life savings in the process. It seems to me that you reach for the stars but hit the floor. You didn't hit the treetops. You're flat broke now. You're on the floor now, motherfucker. But meanwhile, you know, if he had just invested half his life savings into the restaurant and got another investor to put the other half in, he would have reached for the treetops and stayed there. He wouldn't have hit the ground because he still has half his money. The only thing that should have been written on this bathroom wall is, please do a courtesy flush. Please. Please. 